Howdy folks, we're looking at Ed's Magazine, uh, issue 49, released September 1997. And as you can see, it's the future, the future of interactive entertainment, and also the year 2019, as we have Blade Runner on the cover. Um, a less than stellar cover for the Edge Magazine, but uh, well, it's always nice to see Harrison Ford hanging around in this iconic scene. The uh, computer game of 1998 was uh, fantastic, so Edge is going to look into uh, how that was made by Westwood. So uh, we see some tarot cards here, and the uh, opening column is about the importance of graphics in the history of video games. Can we get, get a bit sharper maybe? I don't know. So... Uh, yeah, Edge admits that with new graphics come new possibilities in games. There's a long article about the history of it. So, uh, yeah, we see the Saturn II being slightly discussed, although actually not much is said because apparently Sega had a deal with 3DFX for the Saturn II, but that fell short, and now 3DFX was uh, with empty hands. I don't know who eventually made the Dreamcast uh, um, graphics capabilities, but it wasn't them. Uh, Nintendo 64 doing well, and Yamauchi uh, said he would leave in the year 2000 after the 64DD was released at the time of the president of uh, Nintendo. Uh, the Nintendo 64 modem, I don't know if this was ever a thing. And there's also talk about how the Nintendo 64 hardware would be used for arcade games by SATA with a T. I don't think anything I mentioned on the page was released. Uh, NEC, the, uh, you know, probably best known from the, for the uh, PC engine, also working on arcades using PowerVR and Intel. I don't think any anything big came out of this either. Uh, another weird news is uh, Sega uh, buying Adeline, who made Little Big Adventure, and they would go on to make a game for Sega for the Dreamcast called uh, Toy Commander, I believe, which was like a uh, uh, kind of like being a Toy Story, but then with tanks. wasn't a big success, but wasn't bad either. Uh, ECTS still. Uh, thing in 1997 attracting the big guns the European version of the E3 uh, Philips has this uh, scuba 3d headset um, which you can get and apparently it's not that bad the uh, analog joypad finally making it to the UK but, but without the vibration I don't ex know exactly why game.com being released which uh, made by Tiger and it would be like a Game Boy. And the ga games weren't that much better than the Game Boy, to be honest. But there were also possibilities to go on the internet with it. Hence the dot .com. There was also a personal agenda on it. Quite a flop. Uh, what else is there? Uh, Sega having a rather lackluster promotion event with Goldie, the 90s celebrity. So here's a little article about Sinclair, the uh, Clive Sinclair, who made the Spectrum and the ZX80 and other inventions. Um, Sinclair would be his latest, his last big uh, hit. And here they talk about how he's making um, some very small radios, apparently. I don't think that became a success. So, more technology of the 90s, we see a, uh, the Newton message pad, which Edge really likes, uh, a beamer, some kind of palm top, um, music CDs, let's see, some kind of digital camera, a uh, book about Bill Gates accepting the, uh, the popularity of the internet and making Internet Explorer. This is fiction called The Shift, which Edge isn't too positive about. Uh, websites are still a new thing for the mass media at the time, so Apple has a has a contest to make a very cool-looking website. In this case, that would be uh, cyber. It's called Cider Space with a D. You get it? Because you know Apple's make cider. Um, yeah, maybe you can Google that. I didn't bother to. 
And there's a look at Ultima Online, uh, which became even bigger than Meridian 59. So that would be very big until EverQuest came out, and that would then be eclipsed by World of Warcraft. Here's Japan. Uh, they have a arcade show called Jafcon, and Virtual Fighter 3 TB, which had tagging uh, battles, is shown. But apparently King of Fighters 97 is more popular on the floor, even though it's more the same, if you ask me. Uh, yeah, was there some talk about cosplay, I think? Yeah, and there's some kind of online RPG called Words. Yeah, Words. Um, I didn't bother to look that up. Um, if it became popular, it was only popular in Japan. Hey, Sid Meier, an extensive interview with him about why he had created Fire Axe Games, his own company. He said, basically, uh, the best games are made by designers for themselves and not for companies. Let's also talk about how graphics are more important. Uh, gameplay is more important than graphics. Uh, also, a lot of talk about how a lot of programmers are more concerned about doing things that other programmers find interesting instead of f trying to find out what actual people would like to play. And he says that in order to incorporate more women in the gaming scene and older people, well, you need more of those kind of people actually making games. So, and he gives some tips on how to start your own development studio. Okay, so the pre-screen alphas. Uh, one page dedicated to uh, Queen the Eye, which is a game based on the band. And I have come to understand that some of the story elements in this game are used for the musical. And otherwise, it was a lackluster game. Uh... Yeah, maybe you'll be able to recognize some of these games. I'm having a hard time doing so. Oh, here we see the first images of The Witcher. Yeah, it started in 1997. We see uh, Geralt's white hair, so that's pretty cool. Yeah, that'll take uh, another 10 years to finish, though. But a big success. You see, uh, maybe, uh, what's the name of the game again? Ah, I have to know now. Tenchu, of course, one of the earlier stealth games, although I never liked it. Uh, we see a new version of Duke Nukem 3D for Nintendo 64. Looking really good. Is this virtual on? Speed power gun bike. I don't know. I don't want to spend too much time looking at these pre-screen alphas because half these games don't get released. Okay, Power Slide, released for the PC. Um... A uh, not a very popular game. It gets two pages, probably because it's made in Australia, which is quite odd. And uh, yeah, a lot of different kinds of vehicles. But other than that, it wasn't that of a hit. Judge Dread was universally panned. It's a light gun shooter made by a Gremlin, a UK game developer. So shooting things with your light gun in the Judge Dread world proved to be a bad idea. Buggy, another racing game made in the UK. Um, it got pretty bad reviews, and you drive a buggy through a desert with lots of hills. And another game without any good reviews is Respect Inc., also made in the UK. Uh, you're some kind of gangster trying to take over a town. So lots of bad games being previewed. Colony Wars got good reviews, though, kind of like um, Wing Commander, released for the PlayStation 1. The Fifth Element got bad reviews. It, uh, it uh, yeah, based on the movie, <laughs> you should know enough. It wasn't that good. Okay, so here we have a uh, look at a game which was very popular, or at least not popular, but highly acclaimed. It's Panzer Dragoon Saga. Unfortunately, the preview doesn't show much. Here we see only a uh, picture of one of the characters. These two pages basically say it looks like a rather average it plays like a rather average rpg even though in reality it's not like that uh there's some talk about how the dragon gets older and all that but uh not that much information given but fantastic pictures and it would become one of the more more expensive games for the sega saturn and uh i should find out if it was ever re-released i'd like to look at that now here's a confusing article it goes all over the place it initially starts about how 
uh, Sony PlayStation, the brand, was going to uh, yeah compete with Nintendo. We see Ken, uh, uh, what's his last name, Kutaragi, uh, and how he designed the PlayStation. It was very elegant. Uh, and then it goes on to talk about how the PlayStation brand became very popular with all kinds of games like Jumping Flash and Motor Tune GP. Um, it seems to be a rather Japanese-focused article because we also see Gumon and Ghost in the Shell and most of all Parappa the Rapper, which was a huge hit in Japan. Uh, here's a one-page article about this, its successes and how it's popular with girls and how it's creating a new kind of genre. And yes, Parappa the Rapper was a uh, quite a cult title at the time. So, Ed should have, didn't get it for the review, unfortunately. But, uh, one of the biggest games of the PlayStation at the time. So, Apocalypse being advertised again. Here's Blade Runner, the cover feature. And Westwood was mostly known for its Command & Conquer games at the time. And they weren't doing, other than that, they weren't doing very, wood, very good. But, they had a lot of great technology running for this game. It's a click and carry adventure, but you could uh, pan the uh, the camera a little bit, so it's actually the backgrounds weren't two D, but actually full three D. Uh, a lot of work went into the story, which had multiple endings, and some of them uh, they ad uh, adhere to the idea that uh, the main character could also be a an android or cyborg, and um, the uh, the graphics are indeed impressive, but a lot of work is done uh, also replicating the atmosphere of the movie, which is fantastic. So um, if you can be able, if you can play this game, give it a shot. Uh, it's probably on uh, good old games. Uh, from what I understood, they lost to the uh, the actual code of the game, so um, it's kind of hard to duplicate. But oh well, uh, I hope it's still able to be distributed. Otherwise, we've lost a very good game. So, on to uh, the, another big article, The Rise of 3D Games. So, this is a lot of technical information, how different programmers, starting with isometric views, but also uh, games like, uh, uh, did we see an, can we get a sharp image of it? This is obviously Battlezone for the arcade, you know, using what seemed like vector graphics. Were they vector or were they, I don't know. But you rode around in a tank shooting things in 3D. Of course, you see Wolf Sank 3D and all that. They don't mention 3D hover tank, though. Um, yeah, how, how programmers uh, with using um, weak computers are still able to make 3D graphics using smart algorithms. And as um, 3D cards get smarter and more powerful, uh, less tricks are used. So let's talk about the voxels. Uh, being a, a choice besides polygons, although all the 3D cards at the time were, uh, are built with polygons in mind. Um, yeah, they show some other classic games like uh, Knot, which is um, K-N-O-T, which I've never heard of before, actually. There's Elite, of course. Um, so talk about, you know, how um, OpenGL and Direct3D are trying to make a standard for the computers. Uh, there's actually even a whole page w describing how 3D works, which also gives in a bit idea why the Saturn was still able to make 3D, but using squares, and why the Sony PlayStation has a lot of uh, ridged-looking um, uh, polygons, uh, mostly seen in Metal Gear Solid, but also in games like Vagrant Story. So, um, yeah, Shiny boasting about their new engine, which would make uh, Messiah look fantastic, but it wasn't a very good game. Yeah, so Edge of the Time showing a lot of technical know-how. Let's get on to the reviews. MRC, Multi Racing Championship, the first realistic racing game for the Nintendo 64. Edge likes it, gives it a 10, 7, and yes, it is fairly good, although short. Uh, it sure isn't Gran Turismo, but it uh, looks fine. Last Bronx, Edge gives an 8 even. Uh, kind of like 
uh, soul blade for the Saturn, I guess, with a very urban theme going for it. Yes, it played well, but by now people weren't that interested in yet another 3D fighting game for the Saturn. So it didn't sell well. Dark Earth is the most interesting game this month. It gets an 8 out of 10. It's kind of like a uh, Alone in the Dark, but then 1997. Um, it has v fantastic visuals and a, its own kind of style. We saw it on the cover of Edge a little bit earlier. Uh, this might be considered a hidden gem. The combat is a bit awkward. Uh, the puzzles aren't the best, but it has a fairly good story and a lot of atmosphere to it. So it gets an 8 out of 10. Hopefully on good on good old games too. Now Dark Rift is also a fighting game. This one's for Nintendo 64 and Edge thinks it's extremely ho-hum and it's a bit slow, so it's not that good. Street Fighter going 3D for the first time. Gets an 8 out of 10 with its EX series. Um, I never liked them. I preferred Super Turbo. I thought it was a bit slow. Uh, made by um, another company, actually. Capcom released it, but uh, do they mention? Yeah, Arika. Whatever. I never liked the EX series, but Edge gives it an 8. So Extreme Assault gets a 7 out of 10. This is uh, for the PC, a... Apparently, oh, I, I, it's been a while since I read the review, but it looks good. So uh, maybe if you're into 90s flight sims with, with uh, some combat, check it out. <laughs> uh, no respect. This was like an arena uh, shooting game with uh, kinds of with the hovercrafts. It uses voxel technology, so it looks really really interesting. Uh, Edge gives it a six. So uh, they say there's not that much debt to it. Well. I think it's still, uh, you could say that about a lot of games released at the time. Um, well, what's interesting is that the same engine, or at least the use of voxels, would be used by the same company uh, uh, to later make, uh, what's it called? Ah, uh, oh, Jesus. Out, Outlast? Outsider? Ah, oh, Jesus. Well, we'll see it later. Another fantastic uh, uh, use of voxels in a huge, way before its time, uh, adventure game. Oh, man, I, uh, I totally see it uh, in my mind, but I can't come up with the name. Oh, you probably know what I'm talking about if I say voxels in 90s adventure game. Uh, actual Golf 2 gets a 7 out of 10. Um, and they find it somewhat disappointing. I don't know why I remember, but hey, it's, who cares? Uh, Battle Arena Toshiden, the third part already, gets a 6 out of 10. More of the same. So uh, what the Edge does like is that you can switch between 30 hertz and 60 hertz if you prefer speed or graphical detail. I, myself, would probably choose speed. Salamander 2, which is the sequel to uh, Salamander and also Life Force. Um, you can play the older games on the disc. It's for the Saturn. Uh, Edge kind of likes the new version, giving it a 6 out of 10. Atomic Borman, so we have Borman returning to the PC, gets a 7 out of 10. Not as good as the Super Nintendo versions, but still quite nice. They uh, uh, they criticize the funny sounds that the game makes. So if you want to play Borman now on the computer, what can I say? Uh, use an emulator and play Borman 3 on the Super Nintendo. Or maybe Saturn Borman if you're into having that many players. In the arcade, we have Armadillo Racing. Which is a pretty cool uh, racing game. Uh, a lot of lot of obstacles. The you're trying to stay on the course to avoid falling in water and all that. And you bump a lot into the other armadillos. It's fast paced. It looks kind of fun. Graphics are not that good, but what do you expect? It's made by Namco. Total Vice was a lackluster uh, light gun shooter. Uh, King of Fighters '97. Uh, I mostly played '98, 2000, and 2002. So I don't know much about '97. You like a doggy style, really? That would grab my attention. Oh, these these shades are uh, look like the Matrix, and they're released two years before the movie released. So that's interesting. Okay, the gallery. Oh, Messiah. 
fantastic looking imagery of the uh, angel you uh, play who can take over enemies kind of like an old world or maybe super mario odyssey dark earth showing off its own s special looking uh, style obviously tekken 3 and Bejo kazooie wouldn't look that great in game but pretty cool models uh, this would look like Dark Souls, but it's actually Siege for the PC. Conquer, uh, still looking kid-friendly. Okay, well, uh, Edge takes a look at Leaderboard because of the actual golf game and the reminisce of it being on the Commodore 64 and loving it. Uh, there's another Sega Ages volume. Uh, there's an emulator for vector graphics in the arcade. Now here's an article that uh, takes a lot of space, a lot of words, um, in develop about how to start your own computer game studio. There's a lot of attention uh, on what well, the differences between a developer and a uh, Jesus. <laughs> Man, let me let me go back. What's what's the terms they use? Uh, publisher, exactly. So they talk a lot about how. It, Publishers and developers used to be the same, but now developers, um, they have to prove their worth. And there's, um, they give you a guide of what you need, and actually some prices. <laughs> so, um, next month they'll be talking about how to actually make a game. But this is more about setting up the company. Yeah, Rose, they show a couple of, they talk about a couple of demos. They seem to be quite nice. Okay, so the letters. Um... Talk about the bias. This person thinks Edge isn't biased and that the Amiga is dead. Uh, um, let's see, what's this about? Somebody writing a letter to Yamauchi, but he says that uh, the games are too focused on children while it's mostly older people who have the money uh, for the uh, for Nintendo 64 prices and also the interest in quality games. Well, younger people will more likely try all kinds of stuff. They have more time. Uh, yeah, there's, uh, there's some talk about what's better. The lack of games with 1064, but all of them being fairly good, or most of them being fairly good, or this PlayStation Wave. Releasing 800 games in three years. And uh, well, about you get about as many good games. Up until about mid-97. Okay, um, yeah, so we'll talk about Mario Kart 64 being a different kind of game than Ridge Racer, obviously, so Edge said it should have given it a higher grade. A uh, person being disappointed that Saturn is no more the future of Sega and that it would be bad for the Sega, uh, for Sega brand. And uh, this person saying that he has more time to wait for the great Nintendo 64 games. The Q&A is about implementation of the 3DFX card and some talk about... Um, yeah, some lines, what do they call it? Fine lines they see in Turok and Star Fox 64. I don't know what they mean by that. But Edge acknowledges that they're there. So, next time we'll be having the second CD and the 50th uh, Edge magazine. So, Edge will be looking back at the past couple of years. They'll also be going to Shiny in California and Sega's PC development studio. If you look closely at the tarot cards, you'll find that Edge has its name described here. Uh, I don't know how to read tarot cards, but I hope everything goes well for the magazine. I think so, because 20 years later, they're still in existence. And uh, well, here's some uh, games being shown. So this is Edge Magazine 49. Hope you enjoyed this issue, and we'll see each other next time.